Konnichiwa everybody and welcome back and I just want to say welcome to any new subscribers I think there's been a few lately so thanks very much but today um, it's another pickups video and it's a bit of an assortment today a um, few odd bits on various consoles um, we've got PS1 we've got a switch we've got an OG Xbox We've got Dreamcast and we've got Saturn. So a bit of a mixed bag. So let's crack on. Where shall we start? Um, I think we'll... Um, yeah, we'll start with this one. Uh, this, now this is a Dreamcast game and it's, it's, it's a re... Well, I, I say it's a repro. It's kind of... You can't get it in any other form as far as I know. It's kind of a homebrew type thing. And we're talking about the Splatterhouse Trilogy. And this is a version or um, sort of a, you've probably heard of Beat, Beats of Rage, which is kind of a an open source engine that people can use to then make other games. Um, which was originally Streets of Rage that was ported to the Dreamcast as I understand. And there's been a few different versions that I've seen you can get. You know, there's an X-Men one and there's um, there's a Resident Evil one and there's a Kill Bill one. Um, but anyway, this is the Splatterhouse one. So basically, the best way I can describe it, it's, it's Streets of Rage with a Splatterhouse setting. So it's a walk along beat em up in the Streets of Rage style, but all the levels are like you're playing a Splatterhouse game. Find a way to explain, I'll put some footage up so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I, think there are, I think there are three versions of the game on this disc. I've only played the one so far. Um, but this is in like an American kind of box style. Um, so as far as I know, there's no original version. Um, it's, it's a good game, I, uh, I've got to admit. Um, you know, it, there's, it's, it's fairly basic. It's just a walk along beat em up. There's, there's no sort of extra, like, mad stuff. It's, it's just your, your basic walk along beat em up. But if you like that, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And obviously, you've got the added kind of um, appeal of the Splatterhouse games, which, you know, they're fantastic, aren't they? I found it great to be honest, um, I'm definitely going to play it a bit more, um, I've only played a bit so far like I say, um, but a walk along classic beat em up, you know you can't go wrong really, for the whatever 10 quid it costs, um, so I think if you, if you like either Splatterhouse or Streets of Rage, you're on a winner here really, um, and, it, and you've got a Dreamcast obviously, that's quite essential, but there we go, that's the Splatterhouse trilogy. Um, I might do a separate video on that, possibly. Um, let me know if you, if you want to sort of see more about that, just, and I might do it in the future. Let me know. Right. Next, I think we'll do the Xbox game. And this is an only on Xbox title, um, which I'd not seen or ever played before. And somebody else showed this very recently. I can't remember who it was. So whoever you are, I'm sorry, I can't remember it. Who it was I saw show it, but I then saw this in CEX, and and it was I can't remember it was about three or four quid I think, and it was in really nice looking condition. So I thought I'm going to give it a try, and it's I don't know what it's, I, I'm I'm going to say Tao Feng. You, could, you might say Tao Feng. I don't know, but basically it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter from the people who made Mortal Kombat. Only the sort of hook on this game is the fact you can damage limbs. You know, you can break their arm so they can't use their arm and so forth. Which I think is quite an interesting mechanic. And the graphics are really nice, I have to say. 
Um, again, I'll put some footage up. And you can sort of see it was made by Mortal Kombat people because it, it has got that feel about it. But I just felt there was something a bit missing with this. I'm not sure the controls are fantastic. It don't really play like your classic 2D fighter as in Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. All the moves seem to be more kind of Virtua Fighter style moves. And I don't know, it just, it just felt a bit of an odd mix to me. But it, it is good, and it, well worth the three or four quid it, it sells for. Um, if you can find one in one of your local CEXs, I definitely would you know, pick it up. And it is an only on Xbox title. Um, I don't know, with, with a bit more play, it might get better. Because, like I said, I think the graphics are really nice. So, we'll give that some more time, I think. Taofeng Fists. No, sorry, Fist of the Lotus. Anybody got any thoughts on that one? Right, where should we go next? Um, I think we'll go... Where should we go? Um, no, we'll go, we'll go PS1. Now, this... This really wasn't on my radar, to be honest, this game. And I recently, Red7 showed this, and he did a bit of gameplay on it. So once again, you know, I always learn something watching Red7. You know, if you haven't watched his channel and you like arcade games, check him out. Amazing, amazing channel. Some great videos, and he's got an amazing game room. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. But anyway, I I'm digressing. It was seeing him play this game, um, and I thought that looks quite good. I'm just going to have a look, see if I can find that. And I just looked on eBay. And as luck would have it, there was one ending within the, the next 24 hours. And at, at the current time when I noticed it, it was really cheap. So I watched it, put a cheeky bid in, and... Lo and behold, I won it, but not much. I can't remember exactly. It, it was cheap, though. I'll say a tenner. It, it was cheap. And I've picked up Ray Storm. Now, obviously, it's a shooter. Uh, it's a Taito game. Um, and this is... Um, it's obviously not the original release. It's the best of. It's kind of like Platinum, I suppose, in, in the UK. It's a Japanese game. I, I, you know, I forgot to say it's in, it's in lovely condition, got the spine card, and yeah, I, I, really, I really like the look of it when Red 7 was playing it, and um, so I was chuffed to get it, and I've had a go, and it, it really does look quite nice, I think, even, even you know, today it looks quite nice. It has got a, a bit of a strange um, mechanic that I haven't quite got used to yet, wherein there are like airborne enemies and sort of enemies on the floor if you like and you've got like a, a square box on the screen and you've got to have that aimed over what's on the floor to shoot that otherwise you don't hit it. So I found that quite sort of unusual and tricky to start with but the more I played it I got a bit more used to it and it is a really good game and there's got some lovely uh, boss battles with some you know, really nice graphics on the ship, so they're rotating and everything. So definitely, definitely uh, recommend that one. Um, I think it's on PAL. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try and check and put something up at the bottom of the screen if, if I can remember. But uh, yeah, if you can, if you can see that one, sort of at a reasonable price, and you like shooters, I'll definitely give that one a try. Race Store. Now that's the only PlayStation game. Um, so next, I think we might as well do the Switch game next. Um, I've gone a bit mad on newer stuff just recently, since I bought the PS4 really. Looking for sort of retro inspired stuff on, on newer consoles. And again, someone else mentioned this and I, and I can't for the life of me think who it was. So again, I'm sorry, whoever you were, thanks very much for bringing it to my attention. Um, and I'd seen, I'd looked at this on uh, Amazon, and it was only about 15 quid, I think it was. Oh, I'll tell you who it was. It was, um, 
Gull Payne. That's who I saw with it. Um, he was playing it on one of his videos and said it was quite good and I did think it looked good so that's when I looked on Amazon found out it was 15 quid and I, I put it in my basket but I didn't buy it and a few days later I was in game and I've picked up Rad Rogers Radical Edition now it's kind of a, a 2D pixelised run and gun platformer really um, but the beauty is, in game at the moment, I don't know if it's still the case, but when I bought this, it was last week. Um, so, you know, it was early May when I bought it. And we, you know, it's the, I think it's the 11th today, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, it was only last week when I bought it. It's 6 99 in game, this is. Um, and I think that, what's it? Yeah, it was 6 99 on the Switch, and it was even cheaper on the PS4, if you want the PS4 version. I think it was might have been 4 99 it was 4 or 5 99 on the PS4 so I'd got both in my hands and I was trying to decide which one to, to buy and I just plumped for the switch for the simple reason you've got the portability aspects if you want it not that I use it in handheld mode much but I just thought in the future it might be more valuable on the switch than the PS4 that was the deciding factor really but it's a cracking little game um, Again, I'll put some footage on. So, you know, if you like the look of it, 6 99 in game, I'd definitely jump on that if they've still got it in your local shop. Great game for the money. Right, Dreamcast. Now, Dreamcast is one of my favourite consoles, like the Saturn. Um, not that many I need or want, but there are there are still a few. And I've picked up Star Gladiator 2. Now, unfortunately, it is in quite nice condition, but I can't get it to work. Now, there is a tiny mark on the disc. Um, so I can only assume that's the problem. It'll, it'll boot up to the memory card check screen, and then it kind of freezes and crashes back to the Dreamcast startup. So, I think it's Falter. I don't think it's a memory card. It's all in Japanese. Um, I don't think it's a memory card issue. Because I've tried a different memory card. I've tried a brand new one. I've tried formatting the card. You know, in case it needs so much memory, whatever. It still won't load. So, I, I do think it's Falter. Which is a real shame. Because I was looking forward to trying that. Um, I've contacted the seller. But, unfortunately, he's not got back to me yet. So, that may be an eBay case pending. So, the next one, um, now this, ah, now it was Birmingham Gaming Market last weekend, and it was the first one of these I'd been to for donkey's years, uh, like a gaming convention event type thing, I haven't been to one for like 10 years, so I decided to go because it was quite local, um, and I'd, I didn't pick up much to be fair, I met a few uh, people which was great um, only briefly because it was so busy mega 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 busy uh, uh, and it, I, I had the early bird ticket and it was quite busy then even you know it was queuing up with the early bird probably about quarter past 11 when I got in and the regular admission was 12 and it was just getting busier and busier and by 12 you know the general public came in and it was getting beyond a joke and you know after another half an hour or so I, I called it quits and left it, it, it was just getting mad you couldn't see anything and it was it was so hot I thought now it's time to go um, but luckily I did bump into the retro bear um, he was the first person I saw when I entered the uh, the custard factory actually so it was great to see Russ again and then I also met uh, Dana at Hidden Chess Gaming he'd got a stall uh, spoke to him briefly but he was really busy and then I also met Tootie, Stu, again he had a stall, also really busy I was going to go back to him but like I say it got so mad I ended up leaving but anyway, like I say, I was after import stuff um, 
There was only a couple of st stores that were selling it that I could see, um, trying to get through all the crowds. Um, and I ended up buying four games from this one particular seller. Uh, the second seller had a few I was interested in, but it was getting that busy. I, I just couldn't be asked with it, to be honest. Um, so the first one I picked up was Psychic Force 2012. Yeah, 20, Psychic Force 2012. Now this is a Taito game, and I believe it's an arcade. Um, in reasonable condition. Wouldn't say it was mint, but it's not too bad. And. I couldn't remember ever playing this to be honest. I'd got a vague memory of it. Um, but I've put it on and it's kind of weird really. Um, I'm not sure it's one you'd recommend. It's like a 3D fighter, but it's kind of, you're kind of airborne. And you, if you can imagine, you're in kind of a, I don't know, it's almost like a no gravity box. A bit like, you know, the cube on the telly. And they'd go and play the game inside the cube. You're like in a cube, which appears to have no gravity, and you can move anywhere within this cube. And then, you know, it, it then performs kind of like a. I say it's like a 3D fighter. It, it, it more feels like a 2D fighter within this 3D box. It's really weird. The graphics aren't too bad. And I mean, don't play too bad. It just, it just, it's just a bit weird. Just, I think they were trying to be a bit too clever for me and I, I'm not sure it worked. But you may like it, have a look at the footage. Um, if it's cheap, definitely give it a go. But I mean, I wouldn't pay much for it. It's, it's, a, it's a curiosity, I think, is the best way I can describe it. Um, I'll leave that there to the, uh, and I'll, I'll sort of come back to that when I get to the other three I bought, because the other three I bought were Saturn. Right, now the last Dreamcast game I bought, not from the gaming market. This was uh, this was off the internet, off an internet seller, and I've picked up Power Stone Two. Now I've wanted this one back for God knows how many years, and for whatever reason, I've never bought it. It's, it's been one of them that's kind of always been on the back burner. I think I'll get that at some point, and I've just never got round to it. Then I saw this one listed, and. Was listed as mint but then it turned up brand new and sealed happy days I've had to open it because I wanted to play it and it was uh, it was only used money so I've opened it and obviously kept the spine card um, still a great game Power Stone 2 um, I've always had the first one right you know my, I've got my copy I had brand new um, I don't know if I I had this and sold it or I never bought it in the first place, I can't remember. But I definitely played it back, back in the day. So I'm absolutely chuffed to have that one back. It, it still looks fantastic now. But I, I'm amazed this, they have made more of these really. There was one on the PSP, wasn't there? After the Dreamcast. But as far as I'm aware, that there aren't any more. Well, not on a home console. But I may be wrong, let me know if I am. Um, but what a great, great game. Great sort of party item if you like. Um, but it's equally great just to play on your own. Oh, fantastic game Power Stone. Either one frankly. If, if you've got a Dreamcast you've got to own Power Stone. Simple as. Right. Saturn. Now this one prop, cop, put my teeth in. This one cropped up on eBay. Um, and it wasn't one I was looking for, to be honest. It, it, but it, it cropped up on a bite now, and it was cheap. And I thought, well, for that money, I'm gonna, I'm got, got a bite. Don't think I'd ever played it. Um, and it's an American game, which I, I, I don't go out to buy American games. But like I say, this was so cheap, I'd, I'd got a bite. And it's a mock. Bit too much glare on the. There we go. That's better. Right, a mock. Now this is kind of um I don't know how you describe this really. It's kind of a third person shooter, I suppose in a way. Um and I wouldn't say there was that much action. It's fairly it's fairly slow paced and 
it suits me really because I'm not into first person shooters or third person whatever but you've got this kind of craft and you it's the first couple of levels anyway I've not played much of it um, you appear to be underwater and you sort of you've got like targets on your on your map and you've got to take them out and sort of get to the exit um, I quite like it to be honest it looks a bit bland and it, I suppose it's a bit simplistic but I, I thought it was quite good to be honest so I was chuffed to get it. it it's not that cheap a game usually I just happened to drop look here and bought it it was like 10 quid or something I paid for it um, and it's in nice condition aside from the the old boxing just snapped off the bottom which is a common fault on these that's shit cases but um, yeah it's, if you like that kind of thing I don't think it's too bad if you can come across it you know it's a reasonable price that's a mock right now these are back to the gaming market now these these are the three games along with that Dreamcast Psychic Force I bought from the one seller and the first one I've picked up is a game I've never seen Japanese before I remember playing it uh, when it came out PAL on the Saturn and PlayStation I think it was and my memory was it was all right at the time but I've never seen Japanese like I say and it's NBA Jam Extreme now, I did recently pick up the regular NBA Jam on the Saturn which again is not common Japanese I think it's because that, that possibly came out PAL first so now not many people imported the Jap ones so when I saw this at the gaming market and it was quite reasonably priced I thought I've got to, got to try it it's in, it's in fairly nice condition um, and basically it's kind of a 3D version of NBA Jam is the best way I can describe it um, now I don't think the graphics on this one have aged particularly well um, I mean it's still alright don't get me wrong but it's, it's not nowhere near as good as the regular NBA Jam um, it's interesting to see what it, you know, how it performs now, and it, it looks, you know, looks okay, but it's, it's just a bit rough around the edges, and it's it's sometimes quite difficult to see where the ball is. I thought, um, but it was interesting, and you know, I was glad to pick it up. That's NBA Jam Extreme. Now these next two that made up the four game bundle I bought. I've had these before and sold them and wanted them back and I was hoping to possibly pick these up at the market and I've picked up Street Fighter Zero no words needed really what a great game it's uh, you know it's Street Fighter isn't it but not, not much to be said um, but I mean it was great back in the day and it's still great now for my money. Um, really pleased to have it back. What a great game. Quite a small uh, roster of characters, but obviously they did expand on that in Street Fighter Zero 2. Or Alpha 2, if you like, uh, if you want the PAL name. Um, again, this is more of the same, only there's more characters. And this one's particularly nice, it's got the spine card as well. So I was absolutely chuffed to pick that up. I mean, because that they are both fantastic games. And I'm really trying to get all the Capcom games on the Saturn because they are all fantastic basically. I haven't played a bad one yet. Um, with a possible exception of Street Fighter the movie, that's a bit of a turd. But like I say, I was I was hoping to possibly get them too. Um, I obviously need the third one on the Saturn. I've got it on the Dreamcast, but the Saturn one is supposed to be the best. Never actually tried it. Um, but I won't be buying the original one because it goes for about 300 quid. So, 03 will be bought on Repro for definite. So, I'll pick that up at some point, but I'd just to get those two at least. So, like I say, I bought all those four from this one seller at the gaming market um, and I got all four for 60 quid which I don't think it was a bargain I mean they weren't 
many bargains there as far as I'm concerned. They were all just fair prices, which you've got to expect, really. But I thought 60 for all four of them is quite fair. Um, if you, you know, divided equally, obviously it's 15 quid a game, which would be cheap for the two Street Fighters. Um, and probably, you know, that was actually marked up at a tenner, I think. And these these were more, I think the Alpha 2 was the, the dearest. But anyway, I did a deal on 60 for the four. So, chuffed with that, frankly. That that was a good deal in my, in my eye. I was happy with that. And so that's two great Street Fighter games marked off the list. Right, now the last pickup, we're dragging on a bit here, I'm sorry. Now this is one I've wanted for some time and I've been sort of trying to win it in an auction for a reasonable price and I've missed a few because they've gone above where I've put in because I was trying to win it cheap um, or cheaper than the going rate anyway because um, it feels like a win then doesn't it if you get it a bit cheaper than the going rate uh, but anyway Perseverance paid off and I've picked up Cyberbots. Now I, did, I, I could have bought it on a repro, obviously, but I, I did want the original. Well, I'd like the original for everything, obviously, but you know, money's a problem. With a lot of this satin stuff, it's crazy money. Um, but I'd, I'd seen, you know, I'd seen this sort of sell, and I thought there was half a chance of grabbing a, an original one of these. So I bided my time and I've dropped lucky with this one. And what a great game. Absolutely loving this. Just missing the spine card, I'm good. Well actually, there might not be a spine card. Um I've shipped to Capcom, obviously 2D fighter again. Um so I am getting through them. There's, there's still a few more I need. But this is really unique. As in, you know, you're fighting robots, and you can, in addition to choosing your character, you can then choose sort of the, the makeup of your robot, and you know whether it's on wheels or you know they walk around or you know it, it's really versatile and really opens up the sort of variety in the game for me. And you know you fire missile missiles at each other. It, it's really different and unusual. Um, to your regular sort of Street Fighter or traditional 2D fighters. I, it really surprised me how good it I, I mean, I, I always liked the look of it. But I just never got around to playing this. But having played it now, I think it's a cracking game. It, again, I, I, I don't know if there's a sequel, but I've never seen one if there is. Um, Cyberbots. But, like I said, there may not be a uh, spine card with this particular one because... You can get this, I've seen it for sale, for the game, just like I've got here. But then there's also a sort of special edition box set. Which tends to go for more money. But, luckily, this is it. And I couldn't believe I've managed to snag this for the deal I got, really. And it really surprised me how big, it, how big it, uh, the box was as well. Unfortunately, it, it is a bit sun damaged on the spine there. If you can tell. That's that's the one negative. But oh, and the bottom as well. Spot is sun faded. But the, luckily, the front and the back are both fine. And I couldn't believe it when I managed to win this for the uh, for the money I did. I've, I've seen this, obviously, not, not one that's a bit sun faded, but I've seen this sell for, you know, north of 100 quid sometimes. And you just get... The game comes in like a sleeve, like that. And then you get a kind of a... I don't know how you describe it really, it's kind of a fold out 3D sort of, I don't know, what, what would you call that, 3D image, display stand, I don't know, 
kind of cool anyway. And then you also get this hardback book. All about the Cyberbots characters. And it's, it's full colour. Obviously it's in Japanese. But the, you know, the contents is absolutely cracking condition. And so I couldn't believe my luck when I've managed to snag this. I don't, from, I don't think anybody else bid from memory. But I couldn't believe the size of it when it came. I mean, that's the CD, you know, it's, 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 it's a massive box. But I'm absolutely delighted to get it. Over the moon with it. And especially as it's a great game as well. So I'm going to see if I can find a space for that on the shelves. And, uh, you know, have it on display. Because it's, you know, what a game. So there we go. That's another pickups video over. Thanks for watching. Sorry it's dragged on a bit. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. And well done. And we'll try and make the next one a bit shorter, shall we? But thanks for watching anyway, everybody. And I'll see you on the next one. Sayonara.